Hello everyone, welcome back to Let's Play Fire Emblem. Last time we did Chapter 6, Blood of Pride. This time, we're gonna do Chapter 7, which introduces us to yet more interesting mechanics about this game. Lynn takes her leave of Arafen, finding no aid from its spiteful Marques. Now she and her companions resume their march towards Salen in earnest, racing against time with her grandfather's life the prize. Harried and impatient, Lynn presses onward. Suddenly, a young boy appears and pleads for their assistance. Oh my goodness. Hang on, just one second. Okay. Well, it just so happens that the second I start recording is the second my voice decides to get all dry. But anyway, this chapter introduces the rest of the Magic Triangle, and it'll also introduce something interesting called a Gaiden chapter, which I'll talk about a little bit more after this cutscene plays. Please! Somebody! Somebody! Please help! That's enough! Get out now! I want none of your trouble! God, what a pedo stash, jeez. But sir, why? You were so kind yesterday! I thought you were just two kids, a couple of traveling performers. If those men are chasing you, you must be up to no good. Now get up and get out! You're a plague on decent folk! That sounds a little extreme. But... Phew, what a mess. Hmm... Not sure if that's a woman, or a man, or... Huh. That's interesting. Yeah, well, the exciting music's playing, so something must be happening. Where are we, Kent? This is Cathalette. If we head due south, we'll pass into Salem. From here, I'd say we're about ten days' ride to Castle Salem. Oh, that's cool, we're getting close to the end. Assuming we don't run into any delays, of course. Ten days, huh? Yeah, ten days. Oh, look, he's on our side. We know that because he's blue. <laughs> Pardon me, but... Yes, can I help you? You and your friends, are you mercenaries? And if we are... I need your help! Milady Lindis, you mustn't let your guard down. Not even for a child. Yeah, Kent, that sure looks like one dangerous child. With those weird red eyes and teal hair. It's like, what's the deal with that? I know. Forgive me, but we're in a hurry. Is there someone else you can ask? There's no time! Ninian's been... It's my sister! Some men have taken her away! Your sister? Did you say your sister's been accosted? Well, of course, Sane is getting all, like, he's getting into that. Now, I believe in, like, in Japanese, they actually distinguish between, like, older sister and younger sister. They have two separate words. And Ninian is the older sister, so of course Sane would be running all, running all up to that. That's right. By some cruel, awful men. I don't know what I'll do without Ninian. Lady Lindis, we must help him! Nonsense, we haven't the time! If the Marquess is as ill as we've heard, we must proceed. Kent, I... I want to help this child. Yeah, Lynn's a nice person. Lady, I'm worried about my grandfather, of course. But this! I cannot stand by and let a child be taken from her home. I see. I'm sorry, Kent. Oh, Kent even closes his eyes there. In the previous Fire Emblem game, the characters didn't have blinking animations or closed-eye animations. They just kind of stared into space. It's a little creepy. I'm your loyal retainer. You owe me no apologies. You must do as your heart dictates, milady. I will follow you, no matter where that may lead. Thank you. Ha! Such a noble speech. Ever the true knight, that one. Ah, oh, well, you're in luck, laddie. Let's go get your sister. So I can rail her when we're done with this, yeah! Will you lead us to the men who've done this? Uh-huh. They're really tough, so be careful. Leave them to us. We're pretty tough ourselves, right, Edward? Well, yeah. Oh, there's some red guys. What the fuck is that guy wearing? Like, some kind of weird cape or something? Weird cloak? Ah! Oh, no! Ha ha ha! Found him. That's a creepy-looking guy. Come on! It's back to Nurgle! Nurgle? That's not a friendly-sounding name. Quiet now. No! Let Ninian go! We ain't supposed to kill you, but we sure can rough you up. Get him! Oh, we're gonna... Yeah, we're gonna... We're gonna intervene. We're gonna save him. Huh? Who do you think you are? Lynn! Let the boy's sister go. Ah, so you want to help the kid, huh? What a shame. You're gonna die for something that don't concern you. You think so, do you? Do we look so meek to you? I think you're in for a terrible shock. Stupid girl. You'll regret those words. Take him down, boys! It's actually not the boss that says that, interestingly enough. But anyway, so this is the preparation screen, which is another thing that gets introduced in this chapter. So as you can see, uh, the fortune command is grayed out, so we're not even going to bother with that. Save just saves the games, no big deal, really. 
pick units. You can't have all of your units out on the field at once, unfortunately. So you have to make some tough choices about who you want to take with you. Well, let's see here. Not Dorcas. Um, but I will take Matthew because, uh, levels. Wrath, I'm not really going to bother with, uh, because it'll just soak up experience. Everything else, I guess, looks fine. Um, oh, Florina's equipment is kind of in a dire situation, so what are we going to do about that? I really should have bought something for her the last time I was there, but you can check the map to see if there's any other places to buy shit, so... It doesn't... Oh, there's a vendor. Now, vendors are kind of like armories, except they're, uh, they're like for magic stuff. So you can buy, like, uh, spell books at vendors, you can also buy healing staves, and you can buy a whole bunch of miscellaneous shit like door keys and, uh, and stuff, but... Yeah, you can actually, like, check what they have at the, at the map screen. So yeah, this guy sells, or this woman sells vulneries, vulneries, uh, heals and fire staves. Or, not fire staves, but, yeah. Uh, let's see here. Oh yeah, you can also adjust your starting formation if you do this thing. Uh, options. But yeah, no, no, we don't want to go to options. We want to go back to exit. It's just kind of weird the way you navigate that. But I'm happy with that. The one thing that I do want to do is give Florina an actual weapon because she'll be more useful in this chapter. So I'm going to have her trade with Sane because, um, why the fuck not? Sane's not going to be using his lance very much. Haha, <laughs> no pun intended. But I'll give him that other iron sword that's kind of used up so it's a little more balanced. Alright. And I guess, now in terms of, for like, formation stuff... What you want to do is use Florina to fly over the mountains. And she has good resistance, which will help beat one of the Black Fang, pursues Nils ruthlessly. Yeah, so she'll help fight these guys a little bit, and you got a village to rescue, so you can just, like, look at all sorts of cool stuff here on the map. This is the map. All right. On the map, on the map, uh, yeah. So we'll have Ken go out that way. Matthew can, I guess, also kind of go out that way. And I guess everybody else came to... Well, we don't want Ark to get too far behind. But yeah, Florina will go down that way, and she'll also probably... I'll have her drop Lynn down to that area too, so... Okay. But yeah, so we'll save our changes here. And get started with this already. Yeah, let's fight, man. Huh. Who's this person? I see we're facing a shaman, Edward. I've heard that practitioners of the Dark Arts are fearsome foes. We'll have to be careful. What? Who are you? I'm just a random guy who's decided to join you. Please forgive me, I never meant to startle you. Your robes. They look like religious vestiary. Are you an Elamine bishop? Yes. Well, no. <laughs> well, which one is it, young feller? I'm only an acolyte, an Elamine monk to be specific. My name's Lucius. Like Frozone Lucius? Do you have business with us? I was at the inn when this child came seeking help. The inn's keeper was afraid to get involved. He was unpleasant. I wasn't afraid of him. I'm used to being treated that way. I like how he just fucking shows up to say that and then disappears. That's awful. May I please lend you my services? I truly wish to help the boy, if only a little. Of course. Thank you very much. The blessings of St. Elamine be upon you. And, God, how many minutes are into this recording without us having even started? But yeah, so this is Lucius. He's a monk. Monks use light magic. Shamans? Shamans use dark magic. I guess you can see where this is going in the weapon triangle type deal thing here. And every spell has uh, its unique animation, which is kind of why I like using magic. I like using magic much more when I was a kid. Um, and Lucius is pretty fast. But he, in terms of the physical defense, he's like freaking tissue paper. He's also tied with Wrath for the worst defense growth in the game, but unlike Wrath, who has a decent base defense, Lucius has one base defense, as you can see. Lucius has 55% HP, 60% magic, 50% skill, 40% speed, 20% luck, 10% defense, and 60% resistance. Now, if you remember, I mentioned at one point that um, luck is really only a problem if you don't have a lot of it. And Lucius does not have a lot of it. Luck is really a problem for him. Which is bad, because when you stack it together with his bad defenses, what you'll see is that he's not really as durable as you think he is. And that's why I prefer using Sarah as a bishop. Clerics also promote into bishops, by the way. Um, because Sarah is, like... The offensive difference really doesn't matter. Sarah is just as fast as Lucius is, basically, after you factor in, like, growths and everything like that. Also, what I just did there was I used Nil's ability to make Matthew move again. 
which is like what his special bardic powers do. They give your units another turn, which is very, very useful, but I am too stupid to use Nils correctly. That's pretty much it, basically. Um, I want to equip my sword to take out this guy. Uh, Nils has an interesting set of growths. He has 85% HP, 5% strength, 5% skill, 70% speed, 80% luck, 30% defense, and 70% resistance. As you can see here, the little bar is only half as much for Nils. Um, because every unit has different, like, caps, um, but since these guys are all unpromoted units, they all have the same set. But Nils is technically a promoted unit since he can't promote. Um, what do I want to do? I want to have Lin rescue... I actually probably should have used, uh... Probably should have used Nils to get Florina across and then drop Lin in the same... In the same, like, turn, I guess you could say. Like, you could have Florina rescue a character and then have Nils, like, give her her turn back so she can, like, fly Lin over the mountain and drop her. That's what I usually do, but for some reason I just really wanted Matthew to get that kill. I want Matthew to get lots of kills, because Matthew's a cool guy. Actually, yeah, Kent is probably too strong for him, but... Urk definitely isn't, yeah. Which will be good, because Urk can get a little bit of, like, shared experience, too. For my Elowood mode run, I actually want to use mostly magic users, for a reason that I... Way to go. <laughs> well, if only one stat had to go up, it's better that one than any other one. Alright. So Matthew will be good to beat this guy up. Um, but yeah, Nils is definitely very useful. Uh, but Lucius has the annoying capability to, like, just get hit over and over again because of his bad luck. Because Sarah gets so much more luck than Lucius, it really does make a difference in terms of a void. Oh, hey, look at that. Sane can get a lance. I forgot about that guy. Yeah, you can also check your enemies' like equips and whatnot, so you can see like if they do, uh, if they'll drop weapons. If they drop weapons, they'll be flashing green in the screen. Um, but I'll actually talk more about that like a bit later when there's a glitch that you can exploit. Yeah, you can just kind of see their equipment there. All right, I don't want to put Kent as like his maximum movement because then the mercenary will attack him from the forest. That's not a good idea right there. Okay, so we'll just have uh, Florina drop Lin right there, and uh, now we can have Nils use his special Bodic powers to give Florina her turn back, which helps. Yeah, hopefully Florina ends up being pretty useful, because Pegasus Knight- this is why Pegasus Knights are so good, basically. Um, wow, she's only doing four- four with Slimlands, seven with that? Okay, I guess we'll do it that way. Actually, I just realized that I dropped Lin on a square where the boss can attack her. So it would be really bad if this guy decides to attack Lin, and then the boss hits Lin, and then they, like, two-round her and kill her. That would be really fucking pathetic, right? Alright, and the boss usually will always move first. Who are you supposed to be? Playing the heroes in some foolish knightly romance? You may think you're helping the children, but you're only rushing to your doom. Nils and Ninian are actually plot-wise, like, two of the most important characters in the game, by the way. So, just kind of important to remember. Remember that for later, viewers. Uh, but yeah, I mentioned that this chapter also introduces something called a Gaiden mechanic. Also, I love the fact that that mercenary has zero damage, but a 1% chance of getting a critical on Kent because his luck is so bad. That's just cool. Um, Alright, okay, so he is going to attack Florina. That's good. I'd rather have him attack Florina anyway. Um, but yeah, so the Gaiden chapter. Basically, the Gaiden chapter is an extra chapter that manifests itself is like an X chapter. It's, it's hard to describe, but basically what it does, it, it's just another map for you to play. It's more of the game for you to play. You get more story, you get more, like, you get more chances to get experience for your units. Um, and it takes the place of like an X chapter, so it's like, it'll be like chapter 7X or something like that. Okay, that's looking a little hairy. 